Welcome to part 2 of the QNX IO and Interrupt Handling Demonstration. What we'll be looking at in this section is calling your code directly as a result of an interrupt. Some, uh, some of the options available for tracing and also uh, what the difference is between the timer interrupt and real hardware interrupts. I hope you enjoy. One option you have in QNX is to be called directly by the kernel once an interrupt happens. This means that your code will be the thing that's called. To do this, we change our interrupt attach event to an interrupt attach. Same IRQ, we give it a handler function. And in this case, because we'll fall straight through, nothing else is going to block us anyway. I'm just sleeping for 100 uh, seconds. I've moved our code up. Uh, const. and so and put in the header necessary so we're still interrupting on zero this is our code that's going to execute we return null um, if we have a, if we return anything but null we would be calling or passing information back to an application level so we get the actually the best of both worlds so let's try and compile this which did and we'll run it and you can hear the nice tones. Let's do the trace log. Once it's done, we will go back and stop the noise. Back and look at the log. Now this time we won't we'll surprisingly see absolutely uh, come on no work done in the process because our process is sitting there sleeping where the work actually happens is in the interrupt itself because that's what we called if we expand interrupt zero we see ourselves and two other processes that are actually paying attention to that interrupt and being called when it happens our function is that one which takes 2.2 milliseconds yeah a bit less a bit more 2.5 microseconds and if I go to the event log itself for more detail there's interrupt 0 that's us there it's a bit higher so I have interrupt 0 happening at that one microsecond later our code executes and our code exits 2 microseconds after that Let's have a look further down, find another one. 430, oh sorry, yeah, 421, 421. So within the same microsecond, we're um, coming back out. In fact, the coding is that far. So from there to here, so it's actually point f 0.49 microseconds. Our code then runs for 2.4, and then there's a transition to the next uh, driver that's go it's looking at that interrupt as well good stuff now as I said we can't debug that uh, so even our old friend printf isn't going to help us uh, what we can do with it is there are trace options available so we want to see how long this um, this out 8 takes so I could do a trace log B um, event number 100 and call it test one for five characters and then do another one so I put traces around that out eight to see how long that took traces of course are going to add their own overhead so let's do it anyway compile run lots of tones and do the have a look at it stop it that's good and notice there oops lots of other options in the um, monitor as well CPU activity all sorts of things back to the interrupt numbers themselves Sit in blow them up a bit a tad longer 
So now we've got a few other events. There's our first one, which is, can we see that? There's our interrupt itself happening just before. 0.4 microseconds again, it's very consistent. There's our first one. There's our user event. 256, which is 100 hex, there's our second event. So we know how long the events took. In between there is our out 8. And we can also compare this to before the trace and see how long the actual traces are. So the traces look like they're about 2.2 yeah, microseconds each. And then right at the end, want just that much to clean up before we exit the interrupt handler. Very useful. So you can get a lot of information. This, these trace logs are available in text form as well, which is much more expanded and also searchable. So one thing that would be interesting is to actually look for that event, that event, and see what the time difference is between them to get an idea of exactly how much jitter there is between the two events. Uh, so far we're seeing, <laughs> because the resolution is a microsecond, we're seeing microsecond sometimes. Now you may say that uh, interrupt zero is a pseudo interrupt and not a real one. How do we deal with real hardware interrupts, such as the serial port? There's our port interrupt on three, which we'll compile and we'll run. And we have output. We have output because I ran this. Find is redirecting its text output to serial two. So that's where our characters are coming from on the serial port. If we do a trace, we will see all that, and then we stop the process. You'll notice how easy it is to stop and start an interrupt handler. Go to the log we just took. Interrupt 3 still. Sorry, interrupt 3. As expected. Oh look! There are two things actually dealing with interrupt 3. One of them is us, and the other is the actual driver for serial ports. So interrupt 3 happens here at 947, 948, our code runs, 950, we're finished. 951, uh, the serial driver gets to do with deal with it, so our code happens here. At so that's our OS to us running time. Now to really test this, this is still in the OS, we do still don't see what the input is. Uh, to do this properly, we could probably put a crow on some sort of input device that toggles the uh, request to send. Uh, that would cause an interrupt on 3. You can then compare the time of that interrupt to the time of uh, the output to the parallel port. And it would give you a measure of the jitter and reliability of the uh, interrupt system. Do it under load, uh, not under load, any conditions you wish. It's a very interesting... Uh, this YouTube demonstration was brought to you by Symmetry Innovations, uh, the Australian QNX distributor. In it we've seen digital output. Uh, you can see how digital input would work as well. Interrupts being handled by an application. Interrupts called directly by the kernel. We've seen tra tracing of interrupt handlers and using real serial port hardware for interrupting. Uh, for more information, go to qnx.com to find out more about the operating system itself, uh, and this has only been a very small part. Uh, dealing with hardware is not hard. Thank you.